Hey guys, this is Devin and this is Barefoot Props. Last video we showed you how to make templates off our duct tape mannequin. Today I'm gonna to show you how to finish them up and make this nice armor right here. Stay tuned. <laughs> Now, you know, we gotta decide what we're gonna do with that initial duct tape template creation off the duct tape mannequin. So what I've decided is is I wanna make um, these sections here, all these midsections here as a leather texture. Uh, so I kinda want an earlier age looking armor. So that's gonna be kind of a leather texture, and then we're gonna trim them all out with uh, these metal bands. It's gonna have this neck shield thing that comes up off the neckline that I made. Um, I'm kind of playing around with how that's gonna be shaped. I want it to be a little peaked in the front, a little peaked in the back, and kind of low profile on the edge. So what we wanna do is we wanna add a leather texture to this foam before we start putting a lot of trim or anything on there. Cause once we get the trim on there, it's gonna be a lot harder to do this technique. So every big base piece of foam that I make, I'll put this texture on it first, then I'll trim it out with all the pieces and extra trim pieces that are gonna be metal. So, but this is for our leather underlining. So, so a lot of times I have used my heat gun for this before but it's actually fairly convenient if you can get a really good hot iron, you know, go steal your family member's iron. I was gonna say wife, but that would not be politically correct. But this is actually my wife's iron. I may have to get one for the shop if I keep messing it up. But anyhow, my wife's iron I am using to do this, so don't tell her. So anyhow, we've got that, well, she'll watch the video and I'm screwed. Great, thanks guys. But anyhow, we've got this iron, it's already preheated. I took some aluminum foil, Wrinkle it up real tight, get it all crunched up, get lots of good wrinkles and creases in it, kind of flatten it out just in some specific pattern. Slap it down onto your foam, put the iron on top of it and press. So keep some of those heavy creases and stuff in your aluminum foil so it gets those deeper things. And so we're just gonna keep working our way down this template, uh, holding some heat on here, putting some pressure. I think you can see here this nice texture in here now. So. Okay guys, so I finally finished ironing on all my leather texture. I'm and really wanting to kind of knock out this neck shape design and then we'll start trimming this out. The trim piece will be pretty easy because it's just gonna be straight pieces of EVA foam. So we'll just cut strips and just start gluing them on. Uh, but for first of all, I wanna put this neck piece on. And how I did that was I just took some scrap EVA foam uh, that I have left over from cutting this out. And I kind of just put it down in here in this area to kind of find my shape for what I want the neck piece to be. So I'm just gonna grab a random scrap line over here. It's probably not the best, but you know, I'll start kind of rough trimming it in so it'll go down in there. But basically what you're doing is you're just lifting up the foam and then I just traced along the edge of this upper suit here along this to get that curve that I need. And so once you have this thing in shape, you can kind of trace around and you cut some of that out, drop it down a little bit more and you may need to do some more trimming or whatever. And so once I've got that shape done, now I just decided on my top edge, the shape I wanted and I just drew it on with a Sharpie and then I took it to the table and cut it out. So this is gonna be the template for each side. And then once we glue all that together and hook it to the top of this, I think we'll have a good uh, neck guard. And we're just gonna trace this on here. All right, so our contact cement's about dry. So I went ahead and pre-coated this. I figured you'd see me use enough contact cement by this time to know how to put it on. So we put it on both sides until it's almost you know, dry. Usually it just takes a few minutes uh, if you get it on a little thick, some areas may take a little bit longer, but I just, uh, I think since this piece doesn't have registration marks, since I was just kind of custom making the template as we go, I think it's going to be best to glue this on why it's on the duct tape mannequin. Uh, otherwise I think the foam may stretch and I may not have the pieces enough to reach in the back. 
So I'm gonna start gluing this on. I'm gonna line up the front here first and then we're gonna work our way around. I expect to have to trim it some in the back. I actually left a little extra there just in case I had to. And so we'll trim that once we get it glued on. But let's start here by securing the front piece here first. And then I'm just gonna kind of work from one side around. Got this thing in place now. I'm just going around and securing any glue lines here to make sure it's all nice and attached well. We're gonna trim up the back to make all that come together, but you can see it's got a nice little neck shield. We come up and trim this out. We'll put some ornate stuff on it, trim up these corners here. Uh, all right, guys, uh, Bucky and I are back out here working again in the shop. We're cutting some strips here. He's over. I'm a little distracted. I came out here today to do this and um, when I first got out here, all I found was a bunch of pork rind trash and all my beer was gone on my refrigerator. I wanted to check my security camera footage a little bit later and see what the heck's going on. What the? Can't find the damn wrestling channel. Son of a... Basically, I've got one of these nice cutting mats. You can buy these at um, Hobby Lobby or Joann's or Michael's probably. Um, and I'm just using the lines on this. They're actually one inch lines to line up the foam and my T-square here, straight edge. So I can just cut a whole bunch of foam strips in it. And these are gonna be our metal binding, or they'll look like our metal binding on our armor. All right guys, you remember this guy. This is the piece that we used to make the uh, template out of for the next seal. But I wanna make kind of a, an ornate top piece. And so I'm gonna go ahead and cut it out of this. Now all we need to do is trace that onto here and make two of those. And so I left a little extra in the back again because we will probably have to seam this and trim it some. So, and all these little strips, I'm gonna heat seal them first with my heat gun. And that'll do two things. One thing is it'll go ahead and take some of the uh, porousness out of the foam uh, so it paints better. Uh, but it'll also, on the softer foam, it'll round the edges off a little bit. Soft. I've just pinned this up here so I can kind of decide how I want this thing to fit. And then I'll just trace kind of where I want the glue to be. So this is going to be the front trim here. We're just gonna, I've already traced some of it, but we're gonna work our way around to keep tracing. And then we'll come back and we'll glue this on. And so I'm gonna go ahead and kind of talk about split, uh, strapping and Velcro and those types of things and how to put these things together. I find with my chest piece, since I can't spin it around my body, the best thing is usually to the side. So at least that way I can get myself in and out of it if I want to. On the abdominal piece and the cod piece, uh, I'm just gonna hook those in the back um, with some nylon strapping. The reason I'm using nylon strapping instead of like, cause my uh, weight tends to fluctuate a little bit. So sometimes uh, I need a little extra space there. So, um, and right now is one of those times where I need a little extra space. So anyhow, we're, we're gonna put the um, Velcro 
I went ahead and prepped everything with some uh, contact cement here. So really everything's pretty much ready to stick together. And so I've got a little piece here that I'm gonna use to uh, make a bridge across here so that I can put the Velcro on and then the other side will stick to it. So, so now what we've got here is we've got this piece here We'll have Velcro on there and Velcro on here, and then they'll just clip together. Okay? All right, so we've got that piece ready to go. We're gonna set it out of the way, and let's just start putting our strapping on. And again, all I did was contact cement on both pieces. I've kind of decided where I want the clips to be, and we're just gonna secure these on. And then we'll leave a little extra tail to hook these little buckles on. So. We've Finished putting together the armor, we put the Velcro on the chest piece and the uh, we did strapping on the abdominal and uh, cod piece. Uh, we're going to clean this up with uh, a Dremel and uh, just kind of go along these top edges and get this seam a little bit better. We got Bucky as a helper in here so we're going to work on this uh, with the Dremel and then we're going to come back and just put some uh, googly eyes on with uh, some super glue. So I've been cleaning up some with the Dremel until my battery died, so I'm charging my Dremel, but meanwhile we're putting the googly eyes on for rivets. And I know it looks kind of funny now because you, you hear all these googly eyes bounce around, but once these things are painted you'd be surprised how much it looks like just bolts. And so it's a really cheap way of getting some nice, uh, round, perfectly round things on your armor that are super lightweight. So. We're going to do one more step before we get to painting. Sadly to say today, I've had a very rough setback, is my favorite Dremel died. No! <laughs> it's too soon. I didn't get to do as much cleanup as I want, but I do want to go ahead and show you the rest of these steps for finishing up this armor. So, um, quick seal is a, the caulk I use as a water-based caulk. Uh, so any of these little seams and stuff that I don't want to show or maybe a little bit more gap than what I want them to be, uh, we can seal these but up. With the quick seal, what you want to do is um, put a small bead on and just a wet finger to kind of smooth that out. And that'll help fill in any of the little gaps and stuff that you got there kind of seal that off. All right guys, so we're gonna paint some armor. One thing um, we're starting out with is just Plastidip. Uh, I use Plastidip just because it's available most everywhere and it gives a good seal to it to allow you to paint a flexible coating over. Okay, for painting this project, we're going to use Liquitex. It's a heavy body acrylic. We're just going to, we want to kind of keep these creases more dark. So we're just going to kind of go over the top just with this thin layers of this brown paint. The reason I'm not putting like a whole bunch of real thick on at once is I don't want to fill in my little low riding divots we made with the aluminum foil. So we want those to kind of stay dark. So we're just kind of smearing out thin layers of this paint. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a little bit of the burnt sienna here too. So I'll have it if I want to do some highlights in a couple areas just to kind of. drying um, 
I'm going to go ahead and start working on the metal. Uh, I think you can kind of see here how that texture kind of adds to that leather look. Um, we may have to come back and do a little highlights and stuff once it's completely dry, but I want to see how the color is and then see how the, the clear coat will also lighten it up a little bit. So, but I'm going to use some um, iridescent rich silver for this, but we just want to go around and do kind of a light brushing and just kind of really rub it in there so it kind of leaves a little bit of paint behind. But, and so we're wanting it to just be that kind of a dark burnished uh, metal look. Alright guys, our last step here is to do a little bit of rust. I'm using burnt sienna and a fan brush just to put some little, it's like that pits you get into metal that have rust in it. Let's see if I can kind of show this off here. Okay, here's a little area here. And you can see the leather technique too here, so up close here. So just to kind of get a good idea of how this is all turning out. So putting all this stuff on after we do it, some clear coat. <laughs> so anyhow, this is our finished armor, guys. I hope everybody enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more. I feel like I should be saying something like, You can take our lives, but you can't take our freedom!